All right. As you are all coming in, I'm just going to open our chat bar here on the side and say hello so that I can know that you can hear me and that you can see me. We're just 12 o'clock now on the dot. So I'm going to give it a few minutes for people to come on in. We have about, well, we have quite a few hundreds that are registered. The room only allows 100 to come in live. Hi, Mary. Um, but everybody will get the recording. So it is a weekend that we're doing this. The recording won't get flipped out until next week. But we're gonna to aim to get it to you all by Monday. Okay, so as everyone's coming into the room, if you can just say hello. Hi, Sarah. So I'm gonna give it a few minutes, as I always do, to make sure that people are coming in. You will notice at the bottom of your Zoom, um, board, your dashboard, that there is a Q&A, and then you'll see me that there's this chat. Hi, Liz. Hi, Julie. Hi, Penny, Margaret, Jaris, Annie, Therese, so many people. Hi. Hi. Oh, thanks, Danny. This was from out west when I was on a yoga retreat last year. Hi, Tina, Monica, lots of people. Claudia, awesome. Um, so you'll notice, hi, Mandy, hi, Esther, Davina, there is the chat bar on the side <laughs> where I'm saying hi to everybody. So I can't see any of you. It does not matter you know, what you're wearing, what you're doing. I can't see any of you. Um, when I open it up for questions, this is where you will actually post your question on the sidebar. Um, yeah. Okay. Just going to give it another moment. Hi, Adelaide. I love your name. It's beautiful. When we were chatting, I believe it was on Instagram or email, something like that. I remember your name. I responded to one of your, your questions last week. We actually, if we had had a third child and it was a girl, her name would have been Adelaide. Um, my husband and I lived in Australia for a period of time and we fell in love with Adelaide and, and loved that name. Hi, Christine, Jessica, Karen, Sherry, Keely. Awesome. Okay. Hi, Lynn Marie. Amazing. From all over the world. Ruby, who is sipping the dandelion elixir. Amazing. I wish I had that right now, Ruby. I'm drinking some lemon water, but I taught a yoga class this morning and went for this really beautiful walk, so my body temperature is already warm, so I'm having something cooling right now for it. All right. Okay, so I'm going to get started. I, I really like to get these going on time and um, to, to get you back into your day on time. So we're going to go for about an hour today. And I want you to know if you've never done one of my master classes before, we've never you know, done a Zoom in this capacity before, I do not present you a slideshow. We're going to have a conversation. I think it's important to, to get to know how I flow as a, as a facilitator, as a teacher, because you're going to get me inside of the Hormone Project. You're going to get me in any capacity, whether it's my podcast, YouTube, I just am who I am. And there's really no difference in the woman that's showing up to you right now versus the one that you know would be hosting friends for dinner or sitting on the couch or going out for a walk with a girlfriend. And that's how I teach my programs. So for those of you who do not know me, my name is Jen Pike. I am a, a functional diagnostic nutritionist. I work in the um, holistic wealth and health space I have for almost uh, 25 years now. I accepted my first paycheck in this industry when I was 17 years old and, uh, and, and I'm 40 and I've been working in gym since I was 15. Um, the first two years were volunteer. And for me, how I got involved so deeply in women's health and hormones um, is that when I graduated uh, 18 years ago, coming out of my holistic nutrition program, I realized that there was this gap, that I was able to get really good results with the exercise part of things for women, and I could create these meal plans for them, but there was something else that was going on. There was something you know, beneath the layers within that was going on in their endocrine system with their thyroid, their adrenals, further gut issues that were going on, um, menstrual cycle issues, struggling with weight in a way that the calories and macro you know, acknowledgement and exercise just wasn't shifting. And so I started to do more research and, and get more passionate about it. And then I got pregnant with my first child and became a mother. 
And that really just, you know, it, it amplified my, this deep, almost like it was like a necessity for me to understand more because my own body was changing and things were going on. And, um, you know, it's important to know as we roll through this today, I am going to talk to you about how the hormone project came to be. I'm going to be sharing with you some of my own personal um, hormone test results and, and you will see my name is on it. My birth date is on it, the, the dates that I have done these. So this is not me making this up. I am not a machismo salesperson trying to like, you know, convince you of certain things. Uh, no, I, if you follow my work, you know, I really, I think outside of the box and it's how I show up as well. So I'm telling you everything, honestly, today I, I shoot straight from the hip. Um, I cut through the BS and I'm just going to get to it. And the reason I decided to do this is so many emails and questions were coming in about the program. It's very challenging from a time management position to constantly be answering, answering all the messages. And I do the best that I can. I have a team that tries to help me, but I'm a speaker. So it's easiest for me to just take you through it in this way. So soon I'm going to be opening up my screen and I'm going to share with you my own test results from 2017. Um, my first test I did was over four years ago. It was four years ago, actually next month in May that I did my first true hormone panel outside of blood work. And I will talk to you about why there is such a vast difference between blood serum that we do, um, salivary testing, so saliva and urine. And then I'm going to show you the difference um, that had happened in about 14 months. And the difference came from me applying the principles of the GLEG protocol that I teach in the Hormone Project. So this is focusing on your gut, your liver, adrenals, thyroid, and ovarian health. And the Hormone Project is for women in general. So it doesn't matter if you don't have a menstrual cycle right now, um, if you do have a cycle if you are pregnant, if you are in the postpartum period of time, if you are menopausal, you are postmenopausal. Uh, there, you know, are all different uh, issues that we talk about in the course. But at the end of the day, this is an educational system I have put together to teach you everything I think you should have been taught from a very young age. Honestly, I believe these conversations should be happening with our girls somewhere between the age of eight to 10 or 11 years old. You know your daughter better than anyone else. You know when she's ready to start to have these discussions. And obviously what, what we are gonna discuss today as grown adult women will be a much deeper level than I would go into with our kids. But my point in referencing that is, I spend my every day in practice working with women who absolutely do not understand anything about their body, who will say to me in their own words, I don't, I don't know who I am. I don't understand when something feels a certain way, what I'm supposed to do. I'm so overwhelmed with the amount of information and it's all this external information, yet I really don't feel like I know my own body's internal rhythms and um, you know, phases and what it's trying to communicate with me. And then I don't know what I'm supposed to do when I feel like this. I have gone to my doctor, various practitioners. I have spent thousands and thousands of dollars and time and energy trying to figure out what's going on. And I get handed a whack load of supplements and I don't even know why I'm taking the supplements. And at the end of it, I still haven't learned anything. I still don't understand. My goal as a practitioner is that listen, you're going to have to take supplements and there are going to be some women who have to take a little bit more for a period of time than others, depending on what's going on in your body. But that's not the purpose of the program. The, the purpose and my purpose with you is you should be able to reteach what I teach you to somebody else in your life. If you can't inspire your daughter, your sister, your mother, your coworker, your friend with information I've taught you, I've done a shitty job. I have not done a good job. So people will show up and sign up for programs because they want the meal plan. They want the black and white information. They want someone to tell them exactly what to do. I can make recommendations I can suggest, but I'm telling you, you will only get out of this what you put into it. So you registering, subscribing, that's, that's one thing, okay? That is honestly the easy part. Saying yes is easy. Showing up to every class and actually paying attention learning, sitting here right now and not double scrolling on your phone while you're listening to this webinar, that's like step number one. <laughs> It's, are you really invested in learning or do you want someone to do the work for you? Because I'm totally not your girl and I'm not offended if you hop off at any point when you're like, fuck, this seems like this is going to be some work. 
The reason I do applications is because for the first five rounds of the hormone project, I did not do applications and there were women that signed up. I would just let people sign up. I had a max I would take, but I would just let whoever sign up. And then what I realized is there were some women who they just, they either had way too many things going on where I was like, oh my gosh, this is, it's not in my scope of practice. And I was then connecting them with other colleagues or they had never started any health journey ever before. And it was so overwhelming for them that I just felt like it was maybe going to make things worse. And so now we do an application process. And so you apply so that I, and I personally read through all the applications so I can have a better understanding of who is this woman? What has she gone through? Is she on any um, medications under the care of another practitioner? What's her stress picture like? How does her body respond to stress? What are her main symptoms sim or signs and symptoms? What is her goal? What are her main objectives? What can I help you learn in the next few months of us working together? Okay, so um, now I go through all of them and I don't accept everyone. And when I don't, it's, it's not... Um, it's because I feel like maybe I have a colleague who would be better suited for them or what I'll do when I respond to that woman is I will give her some resources and tips and references of things that I think that she should start to do for her body now as opposed to come into the program. So I just wanna preface it by that. Um, other couple of things before we get going is that this is technology and it can drop sometimes. So there are more and more people on Zoom and on the internet um, hopefully, because it's a nice day, not a lot of them are, just you and I. But if I drop, just stay. Give me five minutes. I'll reboot. I'll come back up. It's all good. And we're recording this so you will get it. Okay. Are you ready to learn about my story, my results, the origin of this, and the different protocols and systems and how we run through the hormone project? I will also be straight up and saying that if this is something by the end where you're like, you're not going to apply. It is all good. I, I, that is not my main mission in doing this. I want to answer your questions. I will be running another one in September. I only run it three times a year, so I've already done one. I do this one. I take the summer off with my fam, and then I run another one in September. Okay, so let's do this. So I've made some notes to keep myself on track, and so I'm just going to pull those up. But this is actually like, you know, it's fun when I get to teach webinars like this because it's all top of mind. So here's my story. Um, I'm going to take you way back. So when I was 15, I went on the birth control pill, not because I had any problems with my period or, or anything like that. I went on it because I, I wanted to go on birth control. And so I went on the pill. When I was 17, after a couple of years of being on the pill, I was starting to have breakthrough bleeding and um, just different symptoms where I was like, this doesn't feel right. I think something is off. And I went to my family doctor and I said, I'm having breakthrough bleeding. I think something's off. And he was like, okay, no problem. We'll switch your pill. I asked zero questions. He asked zero questions. Put me on a different pill. Within two weeks, my moods had changed completely. I was so emotional. I was cranky. I was crying at everything. I was putting weight on. My boobs went up an entire bra size in two weeks. Now, my oldest sister, is um, 13 years, almost 13 years older than me. And then, then I have my mom. Those are women in my family. And I went to them and I was like, this is what's happening. And my mom was like, you have to go back to the doctor. Like that's not a normal response. So I went back to him. I said, I'm emotional. I'm crying. My boobs are huge. Like what I need to, we need to change it. And he looked at me at 17 years old and said, we might, but I, I might also prescribe you a low dose Prozac. I was like, what? I'm not depressed. I don't know. I'm not like unstable. Two weeks ago, I came in your office and I was clear and fine. I just had breakthrough bleeding. Now, two weeks later, you've put me on this other pill, which for me, the pill that did this was Marvalon. I was on Orthocept 21, was put on Marvalon. Whoa, rocked my world. And so he was offering me antidepressants. And I was like, this is crazy. So that experience happened to me. I said, I will not go on that. I said, I want to go on a lower dose pill. I've been doing some reading. I know there's lower dose pills. So he put me on a lower dose pill and everything was quote unquote fine. Now at the same period of time at 17, I was starting to get immersed in um, yoga and I was in a studio one day and I picked up this book that was called Take Charge of, Taking Charge of Your Fertility by Tony Weichler. 
I still recommend this book to this day. And she was talking about tracking your menstrual cycles and the different phases. And I wasn't interested in getting pregnant at 17 years old, but I definitely was curious about fertility because I knew that our reproductive system was for more than just getting pregnant. So I started to track my period at 17 using graph paper and a pencil not realizing because no one told me this that the whole time i was taking the pill i wasn't ovulating once and that that period wasn't actually a real period that when you're on the pill it's a chemical withdrawal bleed i had no idea so i was tracking this period that i didn't need to track because the pill controlled that and if you're already like what is she saying when you take the birth control pill it actually shuts down part of your pituitary gland in your brain that secretes follicular stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone that then ripens the follicles on your ovaries to release an egg for you to ovulate. If you don't ovulate, you can't get pregnant. That's how the pill works, okay? That's how it's supposed to work. And so why you bleed is not because you're having a period, it's because you stop taking the pill for either the seven days where you don't have them at all, or you take the seven day sugar pills, which are the placebo pills. And it's that withdrawal that then drops the levels of estrogen in your body and signals for the lining of your uterus, your endometrium to actually shed. What? When I learned this, when I was 22 years old in school to become a registered holistic nutritionist, I sat there and we were in a classroom. It was all women that were in our class. And all of us were like, what? I'm sorry. Can you repeat that again really slow? And we went around, none of us who had been on the pill were asked any of these questions, were told this was what was happening to our body. We're also told that the birth control pill in your gut is the equivalent as being on an antibiotic in terms of what it does to your gut microbiome. So that day at 22 years old, my girlfriend, Susan Baker and I, who is a holistic practitioner, and some of you may know her, we were in school together. We walked out at the, you know, <laughs> Young and Elgin Mills location there, stood in the parking lot, and we were like, we're coming off the pill. And we declared it that day, and we came off the pill. And my body was actually okay when I had done that. I didn't feel like I had any rebound effect. I got my cycle back. But at the same time, what I didn't realize I had been doing until a few years later was um, I had been applying a topical antibiotic to my skin from the age of 16 to 25. I modeled for a long time, and this was the facial cream and serum that we were given by our agency in order to make sure we didn't get any acne. So I was on a pill that was suppressing potential acne, and my gut, I was also applying a topical antibiotic lotion with clindamycin, 2% antibiotic on my skin two times a day for um, almost a decade, affecting my gut and my liver, had no idea. And so when I started to understand about different creams and different topical things, I came off of it. Then I got pregnant with my first child at 25 with my daughter. Okay. I had my daughter. I had a great pregnancy. I had a wonderful delivery. It was all good. If you've listened to my podcast, you've probably heard me share my experience being a mom for the first time with my daughter. And it was a very, like a significantly stressful period of time in my life. So I had all these years of being on the pill, the years of applying this stuff to my skin. I came off of everything, but then I got pregnant. Whole new hormone you know, storm happening. My body had never had enough time to really breathe and calm down. It was lack of sleep now with the new baby, stress, I was nursing, like just you know, all of those things. Then at 27, um, so 18 months after my first baby, I was pregnant with my second baby. Okay, so again, like all these new hormones, but I was pregnant with a boy this time. And I was pregnant with my daughter, beautiful skin, everything was great. My pregnancy with my son was still wonderful. I loved being pregnant, great delivery, all of that. But acne started for me at the age of 27 when I was pregnant with my son, like I had never experienced in my life. It was cystic, it was all around my jaw and my mouth, and it was deep and painful under the skin. And oftentimes it would just be really tender, but nothing would come to the surface. Didn't get it on my chest or back or anywhere else. It was just all down here. I wouldn't go to social events. I was so mortified and embarrassed. I was trying to do everything that I knew how to do in my toolbox that I had and nothing was working. I went back to the dermatologist that I had been to when I was modeling 
And he said, well, I, I still have would put you back on the same thing I had you on before, which was the clindamycin cream. And I was like, but I'm, I'm pregnant. Like, I don't want to put that on my skin because my skin's my largest organ. Whatever I put on it is going to go in into my baby. And he's like, well, that's, like, that's the option. And I was like, okay, well, that's not an option for me. And so I suffered with it, gave birth at 28 to my second child. And, um, you know, then it's two babies not sleeping again, nursing, like you just, you know, it's all this, all the stuff. And my skin was not getting any better. And so I spent years, he was born in 2008. Okay. I spent the better part of eight years struggling with this, trying different creams, trying different, you know, cutting different foods out, all the thing. And I'd get a little bit of change and then it'd come right back. And so at this time is when I started to really delve deeper into researching practitioners who specialized in acne and what was going on. And what I was starting to learn was that being pregnant with a boy, it was waking up all of these recessive androgen genes in my body. It was waking up all of these, um, you know, high levels of DHEA, which my adrenals were producing, which my adrenals were also maxed to the to the tenth degree in terms of stress and lack of sleep, and inflammation. And um, like, I'm not gonna lie, I drank quite a few glasses of wine every week in those young years of having kids because that's when my husband and I would connect, and I would be like, I made it, I made it to the end of the day, and I would have a glass of wine. Um, I was eating on the go. I wasn't super structured and I was working out too much. The only time I got for me was to go and exercise. And so if it was intense, sign me up. If it was called survivor boot camp, it was like hard Metcon style stuff, sign me the heck up because that's where I got my endorphins. That's where I got a hit of dopamine. It's where I felt like myself. But all of that intense exercise, I didn't realize was breaking my system down even more behind the scenes. So when I was doing this research, I came across this doctor, Dr. Carrie Jones, who was the director for a lab called Precision Analytical that ran these tests called Dutch. So Dutch is not a Dutch test. Dutch stands for, it's an acronym. It stands for Dried Urinary Total Comprehensive Hormone. So it's a dried urine test. And so I had started to read a lot of her literature and I started to follow this lab and I was looking into it and I ordered myself a test. I ordered the test. I did not take the test for like five months. Why? I don't know. Maybe subliminally, I was like, I don't really want to know the results. In my head, I was super healthy. I was eating healthy. I was exercising. I was taking my supplements. I was doing everything right that I knew how to do. And I was a fitness professional and I was a holistic nutritionist. How healthy, much more healthy could I actually get? That was the story I was telling myself, but I was still suffering. I was still having the breakouts. I still wasn't sleeping well, all of those things. So I ran my test and then I got my results and I was like, okay, if this is going on in my body, doing all of the, you know, quote unquote, surface healthy things, what the heck is going on in the bodies of all the women that I'm working with? oh my gosh, this is the missing link. This is the big piece of the puzzle that we've not been able to see in the blood work. So I'm going to explain to you some blood work things now, and then I'm going to pull my, my test up. The reason that doing blood work for hormone testing is not 100% optimal is that our blood work can only show us certain amounts of hormones that are present in the blood at the time, and it cannot show you any of your metabolic pathways. Meaning when we produce a hormone, then the body is like, okay, we've produced it, we've used it, now we need to break it down and we need to ship it on out. You don't want to be holding on to old hormones that have been produced from previous phases and cycles because they will recirculate and they will contribute to signs and symptoms, heavy, painful periods, cyst, fibroids, breast tenderness, acne, hair loss, insomnia, weight gain, inflammation, you name it. And so in our blood work, all we get tested as women, and you're lucky if your physician will do full testing, okay? And when you come into the Hormone Project, we give you a list of what full testing looks like. And now because of everything that has gone on with COVID-19 and not being able to get into your doctor, they're running limited lab tests. I've actually, this is the first time we've ever done this in a round of the hormone project. I have now contacted a um, lab where we will be able to actually use a chief medical director in their lab and facility to create the requisitions for the women in the program whose doctors either can't or won't do full testing right now. And this is not through 
zero hip, you have to pay out of pocket for it. But this is the way that the healthcare model is moving is you're going to have to pay for these things. No one's going to cover your health for you. Like that is an illusion. And it's hard working with women in Canada because we're just like the constant question is, is it covered? Is it covered? Is it covered? Is it covered? And in, for women I work with in the U S or in other countries, the world, it just pay out of pocket that that's what it is. It's you're investing in your health. And so we have to like flip that, that mindset switch. And so, um, the full blood work, when you're looking at hormones, you'll be lucky if they test estradiol, which is the estrogen that is produced mainly by your ovaries. Um, maybe they'll test your estriol, which is referred to as like the dead end byproduct estrogen. They'll test progesterone, um, DHEA S and testosterone. Those are typically the ones that will get tested. Now, possibly if you're doing this for fertility purposes, if you're trying to get pregnant, you've been suffering from miscarriages, or you think you're in perimenopause, but you're not too sure, they'll test um, FSH and LH. And the problem is, is that as women, so we produce almost 60 different estrogens, okay? There are three that in measurable amounts we can look at. Estrone, estradiol, and estriol. Okay, so in the Dutch, this is the three that we test for. And then you have metabolic pathways. So you have three phases, truly four phases of detoxification in your body. So you produce your hormones, then you have to start to break them down via the help of your gut and your liver. So if you have any issues with digestion, gas, bloating, burping, reflux, constipation, diarrhea, you suffered from this as a child, you were on antibiotics, allergy medication, corticosteroid creams, inhalers, um, the birth control pill for a long time, you had parasites, whatever it may be, you already, there's a bottleneck. The liver is impacted by all of these as well too, and that's phase one detox. So we can see, and you're going to see in my test in a moment, those pathways. Then we get down to what's referred to as phase two detoxification, where now this is where um, genetic material and certain enzymes are required, the comp gene specifically, and an enzyme to be able to actually be like, okay, thank you phase one for breaking this all down into a water soluble amount. I have to pack all this up now in like bubble wrap and put a big bow around it so that it can't break free and now recirculate back into your body and cause you your breast tenderness, your mood swings, your bad periods, all of those things. Now pack it up really tight. We need certain nutrients for this to happen. And now it's going to ship it along through phase two and be methylated, okay? Be actually bound up and neutralized. This is kind of like phase 2.5. Phase three is where the body is getting ready to set it up to be moved out through your urine, your sweat, and your poop, your fecal matter. Your poops matter, ladies. If you are not having good regular bowel movements, this is so critical. This is actually where the healing begins, which is why in my protocol, GLAG, G stands for gut. So we work on that gut function first, then the liver, the adrenals, the thyroid, ovaries, and we loop it back to your gut. So if we're not, if the back end is the issue, so I've explained it to you like phase one, two, 2.53 and, and move it on out, but we actually heal the body in the reverse. We start with phase three, optimize phase two to then support phase one. Does that make sense how I described it? So we produce it, we move it through phase one, we move it through phase two and 2.5, move it through phase three to ship it out. But if we unleash, if we start to focus on the phase one detox first, but you're constipated, you don't poop, your back end is the issue. We have now just freed up all this junk up top and we've essentially created a plug in your body that is going to amplify your issues. We have to get the bowels moving and calm the gut down first, then we start to work our way upstream. Does that make sense? Only one person has said yes. Okay. All right, so I've tried to paint the picture verbally. Now I'm gonna pull it up. So just bear with me, okay? I know you all think I'm some type of tech wizard because I do these things. It's a lie. I am not. So give me a moment. I might disappear. <laughs> Let me share my screen. And, oh, hold on. Let me just come out here and make sure it's up. Just talk amongst yourselves. Play the, the Jeopardy music in the background. I need to make sure these tests are in order. Okay. All right, let's try this now. Okay. All right. 
can you see this? On, guys. Give me a little bar go. I'm looking at chat here. Okay, awesome. So you can see it. Yes, you can see it. Beautiful. Okay, so let me close that little little chat. Very clear picture. All right. So I want you to see a couple things. First of all, you don't need to know where I live. <laughs> um, but let's briefly Jennifer Pike, that's me. Okay. So this was taken is actually April, April 26th of 2017 is when I did this. So I was 37 when I did this. Now, this test has changed. It's been updated. It's even better now than when I first took it. They actually do organic acid testing now. We look at neurotransmitters that are produced in the gut that can also help you understand why your, your mood is what your mood is. And this is beautiful because I get like goosebumps when I talk about this because I get so excited. But what I do as a clinician is I, we do your intake. I get to understand who you are as the individual. That's our first hour. So people are like in an hour, can you read my test? Can you do this? And I'm like, no, I need to understand who are you? I need to do a timeline. So when people, this is why I don't do a lot of one hour sessions anymore. I don't work that way. I am not a nutritionist. Please understand that. I'm not the person. You don't come to me if you want a meal plan and a couple of strategies to lose weight. I'm not your girl. There's tons of amazing nutritionists out there who love that. I'm not that person, okay? I want to work with the woman long-term. It's why I work with people outside of one hour. I'll do like a one hour kind of like kind of help you get on your track, maybe highlight some things you don't, haven't thought about yet. But if you want to work with me in like a capacity of understanding, it is the hormone project. Okay. So the first session is I got to understand who you are. Then in the second session, um, you have a consult actually with our on-team naturopath, Dr. Laura Anderson. She doesn't become your ND in the program. You get the opportunity to talk with her for another set of eyes. So here's the thing. I'm not the only person reviewing your test and looking at your results. We have clinicians meetings every Wednesday morning where we review the results of the women in the program so that we can make sure that we're not missing anything. So Laura's areas of specialty are um, botanicals, herbs, Chinese medicine, those types of things. And so her and I will look over a woman's labs and be like, okay, I see this, this, and this. And then she'll say, okay, yeah, and I see that. And it's, we create a support system. We use a software called Practice Better, where we have a portal for every woman that comes into the program. All of our notes are shared on there, all of your labs, your questions, like everything is shared in there. And it's so cohesive because when do you ever have multiple practitioners that are working together as a team to support you? We also fix it gets to a point where we have to refer you out. Say we need to refer you out for bioidentical hormone replacement therapy, which not every woman is a candidate for, but some are. Laura doesn't offer that in her practice yet. She doesn't write her boards for that until the fall. So we have other practitioners that we will refer women out to. And how beautiful is it when we already have all the documentation that we're able to send to that colleague. And then we're all on the same team. Like we're all trying to help you. It's the same thing. Like I'll refer people out for chiropractic and acupuncture and osteopathic care and, you know, pelvic floor therapy and all of those things. But we're all interconnected and staying on, on top of your case. So you don't have to feel like you're repeating the same thing over and over again to multiple people. So this first page is a summary. The summary of what is going on down below. So what you can see in my summary page is in 2017, I was very estrogen dominant. Now, if you had asked me back then, I would have told you, no way. I didn't have heavy painful periods. I was very regular in my menstrual cycle. Um, and you can even see, because I think they're right down in here. Hold on. Oh, don't worry. I'm going to show you all that stuff up top. But look at right here. The patient reports regular menstrual cycles. The patient reports significant symptoms of excess androgens, not estrogen, the patient reports significant fatigue in the afternoon and evening, but not in the morning. I didn't have a single surface level symptom that would make me think that I had high estrogen. Okay. I had normal cycles. They were not bad. I did not have the breast tenderness. I had acne. I had acne and I couldn't friggin' clear it. And I would, I would never have thought my estrogen was connected to that. Let's go back up. Okay. So just because you Google symptoms, 
does not mean that that is telling you what's going on in your body, which is why you need to test and not guess. So Jen Pike had very high estrogen. I had healthy progesterone and I had low testosterone, but I had all these symptoms of high androgens. I had the acne. I also had um, so a little bit of excess hair growth. I was like growing hair on my chin. I was like, what the frick is this? What am I feeling? And why is it black? <laughs> right? I had a lot of those things, but that's not what was showing up initially. Now, look at how healthy my adrenals were at this time. This, this is not a healthy cortisol curve, ladies, okay? If we look here, where you see total DHEA production, okay? So DHEA is a hormone that is produced in your adrenals. DHEA is very important because when your ovaries start to slow down their production of estrogen, when you start to go into perimenopause and menopause, your adrenals are like your secondary ovaries. And they now need to step in to continue to produce estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone so that you still have a memory, cognition, healthy bones, healthy breast, all of that. If our DHA starts to plummet in our younger, you know, reproductive years, and then we get to menopause, women who have tapped out adrenals suffer tremendously in menopause. Weight gain, insomnia, sugar cravings, mood swings, low um, energy, no sex drive, vaginal dryness, and, and cognition is just gone and hot flashes like crazy. Like literally ladies are like someone's lighting me on fire. Okay. So if you look at my total DHEA, this combined my testosterone with my DHA and says, I'm like mid-range. We're going to see a different picture in a minute. My cortisol says I was also mid-range. My total cortisol production for my adrenal is doing pretty good. I have more cortisol freely circulating in my blood than what we would like to see, but can you see my curve over here? It's not, this is not good. This first dot you see shows what my cortisol was in the middle of the night when I was sleeping. It's the highest that it was at any point of my day. Now, I was starting to sleep better at this point, but my youngest in 2017 was nine, and I kid you not, the child was in our bed for his first eight years of his life, in and out, in and out, in and out. So my husband and I at that point, because our daughter, so he was nine, our son, our daughter was 11. So for like a decade, we had not really been sleeping. And this is where the stress found me in the middle of the night. And so I saw that and I was like, ooh, now here's how it's supposed to work. <laughs> it's supposed to be in between these ranges down here, it's supposed to be a lot lower. And then when you wake, you have something called your cortisol's awakening response, where it should double within the first 30 to 60 minutes of you being up. That's your mojo. That's your like eyes open, you're exposed to light and your body is like, okay, like let's get up, let's get into motion. I didn't have that. Look what happened to me. This is what happened when I slept. I woke up and I just crashed. And then I continued to crash and then I crashed more. I was literally like, this is what we call surviving. Did I feel like I was surviving? Probably not. In 2018, I was two years into having transitioned my business online. I was head down focus mode. I was really excited. There was lots of new opportunities that were happening in my life. I had written another book. This is 2017. Um, so I was in what you would call the, um, I was in like the pretending everything is fine phase and I didn't know that I was. On the surface, I was like, I got this. I like to be busy. I'm a multitasker. I, I also, this is when I thought I was an extrovert. I have learned I am not. I'm none of those things. And it was when I did this test that I was like, wow, I'm really lying to myself because I'm totally flatlined. And I look at this and I'm like, this is a, this is a survival picture. This woman is not only in fight or flight, she's actually crashing and her body is starting to break down behind the scenes. This is my body. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna to start to pay attention and change some things. Now, as we go down deeper in here, I'm gonna show you. So there's a lot of black and white info that they graph for you so that it's like a picture book. So this is the picture book of what was actually happening in my hormones, okay? So, I'm going to explain it to you in this way. Right here, in, and the, the new test now shows it a bit differently, but right here in this white range where it says androgen metabolization, this was what was happening in my adrenals. So you saw how my cortisol level was freaking jacked in the middle of the night and then crashing all day long. 
look how high my DHEA was in my adrenals. DHEA is an androgenic hormone. Androgens is a more yang, male dominant, like go, 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 strong. Um, blood sugar inflammation will be an issue here, just inflammation overall in the body. So this is where some of my previous gut issues that I didn't realize I had from the pill and the facial antibiotic were starting to show up in my system. So it was causing a lot of stress on my adrenals and the high DHEA is what was driving the cystic acne. This is where my acne was coming from, okay? Part of. Now my testosterone was low. It wasn't coming from high levels of testosterone. So if I had just Googled, you know, cystic acne on the chin, it would have told me to go and take things like Testo Quench, things to drive my testosterone lower. And in fact, the year before I did this test, I was working with a naturopath who put me on that supplement. And I wonder if that's what made my testosterone drop so low. I didn't need that. That wasn't the right thing for me. But no one presented me with this test. So we were guessing. Okay. Now look at my, like I said, progesterone was healthy. So I was ovulating. I was ovulating every month. If you don't ovulate, you will not have healthy progesterone. So one way we know that you're ovulating is we'll do things like basal body temperature. Okay. And when we see that spike, this is also how we know when to test. You don't just test this any day of the week. You, it all has to go based on your cycle. So step one is tracking your cycle. You have to know without a doubt how long your cycle is so that we can pinpoint because we want to run a Dutch test either five to seven days after you've ovulated or five to seven days before you're going to get your next period. And so sometimes with women, when they're like, well, I have a period that just drops out of thin air, or I get a cycle every 52 days, then we have to do cycle mapping. And you actually pee on paper every single day. It's like an ovulatory predictor kit until we get a little bit of a rise. And then we know how far forward we actually do the test. Okay. If you don't have a period at all anymore, you have hypothalamic amenorrhea, um, you are postmenopause, then we can test you any day of the week. Now, if you look down here, this was what was going on with my estrogen, ladies, and this is really important to understand because um, high estrogen is the birthplace of autoimmune issues in women in conjunction with their gut, and this is where estrogen-dominant cancers are born. So I'm not, I'm not saying that to scare you, but I am saying that for you to sit up a little taller, put your phone down, and pay attention, okay? Um, hold on one sec here. Just got a little bit of, I'm going to see someone in the chat. So helpful. I'm looking at my 2017 Dutch and looking forward to the results of 2020. Yeah, my testosterone is 0 0.01. So that's low. <laughs> that is low, Tina. I'm going to come in the room for questions in a bit. I'm just going to close this right now so I can focus on teaching this part of it. How are we doing for time? Okay. So my estrone, high. This is mainly produced in the fat cells. Now, if you're looking at my frame and you've known me for my whole life, I've never had an overweight body. Why are my fat cells converting so much and aromatizing so much of it into high estrogen inside of my body? My ovaries, holy moly, high levels of estradiol, estriol, the dead end byproduct. Well, of course it's going to be high because look what's happening over here. So that was my production. My pr now, why would this be happening? So stress, blood sugar, inflammation, gut issues, for sure. Environmental. What was I being exposed to in my environment? Um, I was drinking wine at this time. Ladies, alcohol will jack your estrogen through the roof, okay? And I wasn't having a crazy amount, but I was definitely having probably two glasses on a Friday, two glasses on a Saturday, maybe one glass during the week. So maybe five glasses over a week, but one serving of alcohol will increase your estrogen by up to 30% for hours and hours on end. Now, if you have a sluggish liver, if you have a gut that has issues, it's more challenging. Your body, it will take it longer to metabolize and break down. Coffee is the same. Sugar is the same. Dairy is the same. Now, I haven't had dairy, cow dairy, since I was in my teens. I stopped drinking milk when I was 15 years old because of what I was reading and learning then. Not because I had issues, because I was reading and learning. Women who come into my practice with really bad acne, the very first thing we take away is we take out the dairy. Why? It's the casein. It's not the lactose. That's just a, that's a lovely, convenient lie that we've been told because they could manufacture and create lactose-free milk and lactose pills to give people. But you can't strip casein and the whey and the albumin out of the dairy, you don't have dairy anymore, which is why when people have issues with dairy, which everyone does because we're not cows, we're not, we are not designed to digest and break this down, but it's a hormonal byproduct. So if you have problems with your hormones, 
especially estrogen, you have got to get that dairy out, okay? I didn't have that, but I was probably being exposed at that time to um, you know, different products like in paper and ink. I was printing and doing a lot of stuff, all that BPA that was on there. I was still using a bit of plastic then. That's what I could have been exposed to. I live on a lake where there is wash off from farmer's fields from the Holland Marsh and that, that is not organic, that comes into that body of water. Um, there was lots of different things that I could have been exposed to. Also stress. Stress will drive your estrogen through the roof. And so I looked at this and I was like, oh my gosh, okay, I need to get really serious. So this was my production. Now here's the phase one detox. You have three pathways your body can choose to send your estrogen down. It's always going to break it up and send a little bit down each, but the percentage of how much is what matters the most. So normal estrogen metabolization down your 16 pathway. So this pathway is healthy for our bones, very bad for our breast. When these two pathways are lit up, the E1 and the 16, um, there are a lot of research studies that will show that when these pathways are high, this is um, most often found in women who have had estrogen dominant um, breast cancer, okay? So what we want to see here, normal amount would be somewhere around excuse me, um, estrogen metabolization for that 16 being around 20%. Mine was sitting at about 8.3. So that wasn't an area of big concern, which was why it was, it was green, okay? Look at my four though. My four pathway, I refer to this one always as like, this is the badass pathway. This is like if you're walking with your kids and you say, look it, there are three streets ahead of us. You see that green one, green is for go. This is the one that we're gonna stay on. This is the, the safest pathway. Red is for stop. We don't want to go down the red pathway. If you go down that red pathway, I'm not going to be able to see what's happening. And if you're in danger and need me, I can't necessarily protect you. I need you to stay with me on the green road. You're always going to have the kids that are like, I'm definitely going to go down the red pathway now just because you said no, right? My body was moving way too much down this 4-OH red pathway. Now, the problem with this, okay, is that in here, this is where things can become activated and form quinones, which will change our actual DNA structure and our cellular health. This is what can make things grow. This is what can lead to higher amounts of fibroids and cysts, autoimmune triggers, um, and definitely things like cancer. The four pathway is known as the carcinogenic. Now, you get these results and you're like, OMG. It doesn't mean you have that. What it's telling us, and this is the beauty of this test, what it's telling us is that you've got some leaks, you have some, some gaps that need to be bridged here, and you have some vulnerability. That's how you look at this, okay? Then you've got your two pathway, which I had a lot moving down this pathway, the most protective, but too much. Like, and the reason why is there was too much up top, which was sending too much down below. And this part here, so you have production up top, now you have your phase one detox. Now things that are gonna support the phase one are going to be things like sulforaphane, broccoli, cauliflower, indol 3 carbonyl, DIM, um, Vitex, uh, things like that. Turmeric, stabilizing your blood sugar, magnesium, B vitamins, liver support. Now, you don't run out and go buy all of those things because we have to look at the big picture. If I had a woman who had high 4-OH but had lower estrogen, I would never put her on DIM because DIM might lower this down, but it will also lower all of her estrogen. And she'd probably start to get hot flashes, wake up in the middle of the night and not feel so good. So this is why you have to work with someone. You have to test and then you have to understand the results because there's a lot of um, options. But when we're talking food wise, ladies, get all your greens in, get off your dairy, get away from the inflammatory foods, cut your alcohol, decrease your coffee intake. I know if none of the things you want to hear, like maybe some of you just got off because you were like, I got a cheese ball and a bottle of wine waiting for me tonight. Okay. I'm just, I'm going to tell you how it is. So our food is very impactful in this whole area here. Okay. Now phase two down here, remember I talked to you about comp. This is one of our genetic SNPs. You have thousands of genetic SNPs. Okay. This is where um, a lot of people who maybe have the MTHFR gene variant, and this is something that can be passed down throughout the family, may be more susceptible to not being able to methylate, to protect and neutralize these excess hormones that are now um, toxins in our body to get out. 
if you're not properly methylating, this is when they come unbound and they start to recirculate and cause problems. So my methylation was very high. I didn't have a problem with that, but there was just, again, a lot there. So, you know, supporting. So we talked about food, vitamins and minerals. This area here, this is where I would require additional support. NAC, which is N-L-cysteine, um, works really well to help to support glutathione in our body, which is our primary uh, antioxidant that is going to help this process of detoxification. B complex really important because B6 and B12 are needed in order to be able to make this happen optimally. Um, and so for myself, I take a B complex and then I also take an additional sublingual B12 from my body. Your minerals are very important. So your magnesium critical for this also things like selenium, which is supporting the thyroid as well. Really important the type of exercise you choose as well too. So this picture for me, the last thing I should have been doing was high intensity exercise. What, I, what should I have been doing? Walking, yoga, Pilates, things that were gonna stimulate my lymph system, dry brushing to help to stimulate that detoxification, sauna, those types of things, castor oil packs on the liver, right? So literally just putting some organic castor oil um, underneath your right breastbone where the liver is, and this will help the gallbladder too. And I do this at night before I go to bed. I've been doing this the last five weeks because of everything going on. My stress has been higher and I have felt that heat returning in my body. Um, but again, this is where in the hormone project, we help to put a protocol together for you specific on your results. Okay. And then going down here, this is where we can get a closer look at what was going on in my head. So the HPA axis is the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal connection. When someone says they have adrenal fatigue, that's not actually what's happening. The symptoms are real, but it's your hypothalamus and pituitary in your brain. And you can go back and watch my adrenal masterclass. I go into great depth in this. Look at my melatonin, folks. I don't like to see this below 40, 45. Mine was 12. No wonder I wasn't sleeping. I also wasn't producing the hormone needed. Where is melatonin mainly produced? I'm gonna come in the chat and ask this. Okay. Um, Susan, I'm just coming in here. Uh, yeah, Stacy. Um, I am accepting, I'm, so I'm not accepting patients. I'm accepting people into the hormone project. Um, so typically I will take 30 women. This year we are taking 25 and I'm straight up honest with you. I have 20 that are in right now. So there's five spots left. You can go to genpike.com forward slash the hormone project and you can apply. Um, castor oil packs. I have old organic cotton flannel sheets, but they are colored. Can I still use these to make the packs? Um, I don't actually make a pack. I'm going to be honest, Lindsay. I literally just put the oil on my skin and then I put on a tank top to wear to bed that I don't care about. I don't actually do the saturated pack. I literally apply it to my skin. So let me ask you this question. How many of you know where melatonin is produced primarily? There's two spots, but where is it produced primarily? I'm going to let a couple people answer. Okay, so some are saying gut, some are saying thyroid. The brain, the gut. Jillian, you're right. It's both of those. So I'm going to explain this to you. So the pineal gland is behind your eyes. This is why sleeping with no light is critical, okay, to restoring your melatonin levels. So we produce some of it behind the eye and the pineal gland. Most of it is produced in the lining of the gut. Here shows up my gut issues again that I didn't know I had because I was having regular bowel movements. I wasn't bloated. I wasn't gassy. I didn't think I had any gut issues going on. Okay. Um, and then there's that nasty cortisol curve as well too. And those are all the notes from that. Okay, so I'm going to stop share on the, well, I'm just going to close this one out. So now you saw what was going on in 2017. Now I'm going to show to you what was going on in 2018. This is 14 months after I started to implement the changes. Look at my results. Okay, so still me, Jen Pike, 14 months later. I was 38 at this time now. My estrogen, I completely normalized. My progesterone stayed strong. Look at the testosterone levels that I was able to come back with, okay? Now, my adrenals, they got a bit better, but also a bit worse. 
And that was because of life things that were going on in business. And I was overextending myself. I was really excited about the findings that I had created in this. And I was taking on so many clients. I, I burned myself out in that regard. But my reproductive sex hormones, I was able to reestablish. And my balance, I was able, like, do you remember where this cortisol was when I was sleeping? It was way up here in the 180. I got it down to around 50. I was able to reduce it by over 100 points. And then my morning one wasn't quite as low. Now this afternoon that kicked up here, I believe this is because this is around the time of the day my kids were getting home from school and I would be trying to make that transition of stopping work and getting the kids home and getting organized in that, but I'd be multitasking. I'd be trying to also answer emails, respond back to clients. And this was a huge, like, I knew it. I knew this was happening but it forced me to change my, my schedule and routine even more. But I was so happy with seeing these results and I'm gonna take you through down here. And look how balanced my 24 hour free cortisol was. Like right smack in the middle. Now I was producing less overall because I was taxing myself, but my DHEA was balanced, my 24 hour cortisol was balanced and let's go down here and see. Now look at my metabolic pathways. So my DHEA was still sitting at the higher end, but I got it out of the red into the green. It's, it's this will be something I'll still have to work on. My testosterone, I was able to rebound. My way I was breaking things down was way over here towards the 5B preference. I was able to get it back up to that mid range. My progesterone stayed really healthy and look at my estrogen. Look at this, every single dial that was in the red, I was able to move into the green. Um, and my 4OH, remember it was way over here. It actually couldn't go any higher on this dial. I moved it over to the left that much. My 2OH, like everything just started to calm down. My methyl activity got even stronger in doing this. And, and this is where I knew that I had a protocol and it's the GLAG protocol. So it's gut, liver, adrenal, thyroid, and the ovaries are in there and gut. We start with your digestive system. We work through a liver protocol. We support your adrenals through a protocol. And when we support your adrenals, we are simultaneously supporting your thyroid. And then we bring it back around to make sure that we have got the gut on that right path. Okay, so this is so important. Let's go down here. So my melatonin came up a little bit. It came up to 18, it was at 12. So it wasn't a ton, but it came up. My spikes and lows were not as high as they used to be. I'm still working on the melatonin now. Um, and I don't give women melatonin just by itself. And I learned this by learning through myself that taking melatonin on its own, because of that gut connection, we have to take things that support neurotransmitters. And it's different for every woman. Some women might need something like GABA. Some need might some lavender sap. Some might need some um, L-theanine, um, ashwagandha, different adrenal adaptogens. It's different for everyone. But this is now what they test is they look at the organic acid markers. I knew that I still needed extra B12 because my range came back high. If it comes back high, it actually means you're deficient because it's staying in the body as opposed to getting into the cells. And so I, um, I take, I really like AORB complex. Three capsules is one dose. I take a day plus then I take additional B12 for myself. I was able to see, and this made a lot of sense for me as my personality, my dopamine sits really high. So I'm like task oriented where when I complete something and I get to check it off, it like gives me a high. It's like a drug for me. It's why I'm, I'm an entrepreneur. It's why I love, you know, building a business and, and talking to you today like this and that it's, it brings me joy, but it also on a neurotransmitter level, which is produced in my gut to come up here, it rewards me. So it's interesting to see that as well too. Um, yeah, so it's, it's fascinating. And again, if you look down in the provider notes, like I still had regular cycles, still some fatigue in the afternoon, but you know what had healed at this point? The acne was like less than 50%. And so I'm going to just stop the share on this and come back in. Um, hormone project starts April 27th. How did I feel physically at this time in comparison to 2017? Um, in some ways I had more stress going on because like I said, I was overextending myself. My, my practice was like through the roof at this point because I wanted to help as many people as possible. So I had no cap on how many people I would bring in. 
and I was doing a small group version of the hormone project and then a ton of one-on-ones. And this was when the results of this one came back and I saw the, the changes that had happened positively, but that my adrenals were like starting to, to show me, hmm, um, that is when I made the decision to actually go in sabbatical. So I closed my practice for the excuse me, when I was opening it up for private clients and one-on-one and just one hour sessions, I stopped doing that. I just recently opened it up when all of the Corona started to happen because people were just needing a lot of support. Um, but I'm starting to wind that side of the practice back down again, because I'm feeling it. It's too much for me. The reason being ladies is I can't teach you in an hour what you need to know that that's the reality. Um, and that's why this is, we're together for about three months in this program. So I'll talk to you about everything that, that you learn in this. Um, do I have experience working with women who experience melasma? Um, I do. Yep. Um, and the Dutch test I will do, yeah, on an annual basis um, for sure. How can I continue with, can you continue with your natural path while you're doing the hormone project? Oh, 100%. We work in conjunction with other practitioners all the time. I, I do not believe in like, no, you can only be alongside us. So if you're working with an ND or a functional medicine practitioner or somebody else right now, then what we would do is actually just tell me where you're at. And this is part of the application and part of our initial consult. What is going on? What are the protocols that you're on right now? And then we work in conjunction with that. So a hundred percent, it's not like you work with us and only us. That's, that is not how this flies at all. Okay. If you want to send additional questions, you can send questions to, um, you can send them to info at genpike.com. Um, after the hormone project, you have the opportunity to stay in touch with me. You can book in follow-ups. Yes. So this is how people move into my private practice now is we work together in the hormone project. And then once you're in the hormone project, you can book follow-ups and then stay connected in that capacity hundred percent. We don't just bring you into the program and then are like, okay, see you later. Like it was nice knowing you not at all. And so you have the weekly classes, um, which are typically on Monday nights and everything is recorded and then downloaded into a library and sent to you. We have an entire member portal on our website that you get a, a private login that only you have access to go into. Um, and then what was I going to, Oh, we also have weekly group coaching calls with our naturopath, Laura Anderson. So you're with me on the Monday nights, you're with Laura on Thursday, everything's recorded. And you're, we have a private Facebook community. You're really well supported in this. But again, I will say to you, you will get out of this what you put into it. Um, yes, I work with a lot of people with Hashimoto's, a lot. Um, sorry, some of these are coming in and going so quickly. I can't make any recommendations on protocols, Jillian, just on the fly like this. You, you would need to work with a practitioner. So if the hormone project isn't what you're going to do, go and invest your time to book in with a natural path or book in with somebody, or at the very least, don't worry about like a protocol right now. Start to ask yourself, are you doing some of the things like, have you removed a lot of the foods that cause the triggers in your body? Are you getting appropriate sleep? Are you getting enough movement? Like, are you getting out in fresh air? Are you changing up your body products so that you're moving to more, you know, oil-based and natural products for your skin, your hair, your makeup, your home cleaning. I have tons of DIY videos on YouTube. All that content is free. My blog, all of that stuff is free. Instagram, I'm posting stuff every single day. There's so many things that you can do that don't cost you anything in the beginning. So, you know, it's like this, the hormone project is, it's an investment, it's time, it's money, it's energy. And I totally get that. So you have to understand like, where are you at? The program is going to be there. I'm, it'll start again in September. I only take 30. Well, I said that, but this time I only will take 25 and I'm only taking 25 this time because honestly, I'm feeling the effects of everything going on as well. And just energetically, I need to vibe and vibrate with a high frequency and I need to be able to really feel like everyone's going to get the best of me. And I know it just sounds like five more women, but that's five more women times three more consults each times reading test results, reading blood and Dutch. And it is a lot. I'm going to tell you, like, this is not for the lighthearted in terms of practitioners. There's a lot of energy and work go that goes behind the scenes. Um, so you can always put your name on the wait list. Once this cart closes, so the program starts on the 27th. I'm doing onboarding consults all next week and the week after. 
you can just apply to go onto the wait list and then you have until September that you can think about it. There's a Dutch test for men. Yeah, my husband has done it. I don't work with men. I only work with women, um, but I've had my husband do the Dutch test. My daughter, who's going to be 14 in um, June, I'll have her. I think you should wait at least a year, year and a half until your daughters have a regular cycle, but I'll run the Dutch test on her as well too. That's the other thing, ladies, those of you that have daughters, have them join the program with you. That doesn't cost you anything. Like they can listen and get educated to all of the recordings and everything. Okay. So we have weekly classes. If you go to jenpike.com forward slash the hormone project, you'll see the entire schedule. You'll see the course content that we go through. You will see everything that is included in it. Okay. Um, what are my thoughts about teen boys? It just depends on what's going on with them. Again, I'd work with a practitioner. You don't want to go like there's lots of people who can run the test. Anybody can order the test, but you have to work with somebody who can interpret it, right? Like that's the thing is you have to know then what your next step is. So um, for a lot of people, like I have parents reach out all the time whose kids are dealing with horrible cystic acne. Um, the things I'd be testing is I'd be doing a GI map poop test. You can't do this through your family doctor. You have to work with a, a natural practitioner. I'd be testing the poop. And then I would be testing the hormones and I'd be looking at good blood work because acne is going to be connected to gut and liver a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Um, can you teach your daughter? Did you, yeah, my daughter tracks her cycle a hundred percent. Yeah. She has from day one. We have very open conversations in this house. Like in my opinion, the changes about our body, the superpowers that we have with our reproductive systems as both men and women, like, and young girls and we, I don't want my kids growing up being embarrassed or shamed about anything that is happening. So we talk about it in our house. Like we would talk about the weather. It's like very normal to the point where they're like, when friends are coming over, my daughter will be like, if you even so much as bring up the word period when my friends are here, I'm like, it's all good. I won't teach class when your friends are here, <laughs> but they're open to it. And it's amazing with those two know at 11 and 13. Honestly, like I said to Emma, I'm like, girl, you can be teaching this one day soon. You can create like the teen version of this. Like you, you got this. And my son is, you know, it's amazing. And they still have to be reminded, right? Like they still want the candy and they want to have the things their friends are having and all of that, but they know they get it. Um, I am part of the hormone summit. Yeah, I would. I mean, I think it's going on for, I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm like a guest speaker that we've already all pre-recorded it, but um, the Beyond the Red Tent group and community is amazing. So I would immerse yourself in it for sure. Um, yes, you would use an app to track your cycle, Liz. So I like Period Tracker. It's very simple. It's free. You can download it in the app store. Tracking your cycle is so, so vital. Um, Sarah, you're going to get this sent to you. So it'll get sent probably Monday or Tuesday next week and you can rewatch. Um, why am I getting cellulite? There could be so many reasons, Mary. Um, it definitely probably has to do with your body's ability to detox, um, liver health, stagnation, lymph system, not getting enough movement and drainage as well too. So dry brushing is important, optimizing the gut health. Are you pooping? Really good quality poop that's not coming from a coffee a day. Because that's like a trick question I'll ask people is, do you poop every day? And they're like, yes. And I say, is it before or after your coffee? After. And I'm like, if I took your coffee away, would you still have the bowel movement? <laughs> Right. Um, yeah, the Beyond the Red Tent group, they're amazing ladies. Is the program still effective in case you can't participate live? Oh yeah. And we have women from all over the, like 13 different countries, the program is in with women at any given point. And um, even if you can't get onto the class live, we post the recording within 24 hours and your questions are answered like within 24 hours in the Facebook group. And we take care of you. How many days is it normal to have variants on your period? I don't know what you mean by that. I don't know if you mean cycle length or bleeding length, but bleeding length typically anywhere from three to seven days. Um, if it's variants, yeah, okay, so yeah. So cycle length in between them, uh, you know, it can typically, if you falter anywhere from two to four days, so say you're between like 26 and 30 days, but if you said to me, I have a cycle that's 26 days and one that's 35 days and the one that's 24 and the one that's 31, that's not optimal. And we would want to work at creating um, a more optimal cycle for you. Um, migraines and headaches are breaking my spirit. I feel it's connected to my gut. They can be for sure, definitely things that you're consuming and putting it in, but depending on the timing of them, they can also dramatically be impacted by your levels of estrogen and progesterone. Okay. 
okay. I'm just gonna see there's a couple that are here in the chat. Um, was my weight normal during this time? Yeah. Yep. When I was having those issues go on, I didn't, I've pretty much been the same weight for, I mean, I'm a little bit lighter now, um, only because I do, I do fitness competitions and I had one in December and I changed the way I work out now for a less intense and the less intensity might it way better for my body. When I was doing more intense stuff, I was holding on to, I think a little bit of inflammation and now my, my system has let that go. Um, so it's not whether it's caffeinated or decaf for the estrogen, Ellen, it's actual coffee is what's estrogenic. And so I'm not saying don't have any coffee, like a cup a day is fine, organic, fair trade, really good quality. Um, and so, yeah, the, the thing with the caffeine is going to be more so is it pulling on the adrenal health. Um, a Dutch test gets sent to you. So when you come into the, the hormone project, we send you the test. It is included as um, you know, one of the things that you get when you pay for the program. So we send you the test, you drop ship the test to, and it's paid for, all of your shipping is paid for, to the actual lab, which is in um, Portland, Oregon. And then we get the results and I take you through the results. I take you through it like how you just saw it pulled up on the screen. Every single facet, I do that with your blood work, like everything. You will come out of this program learning and understanding so much about your own body and all your sessions are recorded. So unlike when you go for an in-person session and you leave and you're like, I forget everything we just talked about. We make sure to record everything for you and then you get that and we actually encourage you to build a, a database, like a portfolio of your health that you keep with all of your test results, all of our sessions, because you will need to come back to it and listen. There's times like, you know, I, I have that same folder for myself with my practitioners. I move along in life and then I'm like, I forget why I was supposed to do or what I was supposed to do next. And I go back and I listen and I read and watch again. So it's really important. Um, organic coffee. I love Four Sigmatic. They're fantastic. Um, and so you can order online. We actually have a discount code for you that you can use. And then your natural organic health food stores are great places to go in and ask. Like, do they have local, um, you know, coffee shops that grind and press and do all of their own beans, that type of stuff. All right. You are so welcome, ladies. Okay. We have been 70 minutes. It is a beautiful day outside. So I'm going to hop off and go find my family and enjoy my day with them. I hope that um, this was good, that this answered a lot of your questions. I hope you have a better understanding now of why I'm so passionate about this and, uh, and what the Dutch test offers as well too. And any questions that you have, you can feel free to respond to us in the email that you will get with the recording, which will be on Monday. Um, you also can, um, you can send a message to info at genpike.com. And then a couple of things to think about right now, if you're not following me on Instagram, please do so, Jen Pike with two Ns. Um, and the Hormone Summit that people have talked about that's happening right now, we have it linked up. This has been put on by a group of women in Beyond the Red Tent. They have a, a private Facebook community, but they have interviewed, I think there's over 15 different guest experts. A lot of my colleagues, Tara Thorne, um, Amanda Lee, Nicole Scott, incredible people and is all geared towards you as women, your health, your hormones, your mindset, so much more. Um, and it's happening right now. So be sure to take advantage of that as well too. Oh, you are so welcome. Yes, and the podcast. Thank you for the reminder. Go listen to my podcast, The Simplicity Sessions. I have tons of episodes on there for you all to be able to tap and tune into as well. And um, yes, Rika is asking, is it possible to include the GI map as an extra? I order GI map tests for women all the time. So if we feel like that's something we want to do, then we can add the GI map test into there for you. All right, ladies, have an amazing rest of your day. And uh, I hope to get to connect with a lot of you soon, if not now in the future. Take care, everyone.